उसको गोड़ा वरम गोरा वरम बी ए आर ए एम गोरा वरम Gorogaram. I think it's KK Songs is the easiest place to access it. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm. Yeah. There you go. You got it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to chant the uh, song. And after we finish each of the stanzas, go to the translation, which is below, and then back to the second, and then below, like that. We'll go back and forth till we finish all eight verses. Okay, you can. Okay, I'm going to sing it. So, if you don't like my singing, you can report me to the Transcendental Opera in the. Remove, remove my portfolio. So. Okay. Nava Gora Varam Nava Pushpasaram Nava Bhava Dham Nava Lashya Varam Nava Hashya Karam Nava Hema Varam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gora Varam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gora Varam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gora Varam Okay, translation. Let's go down the page and you'll find a translation. Guru Maharaj, I don't have the translation on this particular uh, page. If you'll give me a minute, I'll try to pull it up elsewhere. It should be below the, the bhajan. The usually, that's where they usually align themselves. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, hey, you should be there. It's good. Okay. Um, the uh, letters are really hard. Okay. There you go. That's good. Here, right there. His complexion, I'm referring to Chaitanya Ma, his complexion is like the hue of fresh cream tinge with kumkum. He's the ever fresh Cupid who shoots arrows of new blossoming flowers. He bears newer and newer moods of emotional ecstasies. He is fond of performing novel dances. He makes ever new jokes that cause much laughter. His brilliant luster is like freshly cast gold. I bow down to Golda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So here are some of the characteristics of Lord Chaitanya's activities. Uh, if I'll tell you when to go back to the verse, you, you just keep keep the translation up. Yeah. Uh, here are some of the qualities of Lord Chaitanya. He's called the ever fresh Cupid. That means that he's come to give us uh, attraction to he who is Cupid, which is a one who actually is the real Cupid. There is a Cupid in this material world. He's called uh, um, 
what was he called? Mm -hmm. Something Deva. Can't think of his name, but there is a transcendental Cupid, which is the son of Krishna, whose name is Pradyumna. And then from that Cupid, just can you stop moving things around and just, you know, yeah, just relax. Kamadev, yes, thank you very much, Diktesh. His name is Kamadev. And uh, in the material world, he causes people to get attracted to each other when he shoots his arrows into the heart of a prospective personality. And that person, uh, as they say in the material world, falls in love. Mm -hmm. So the word falls is pretty good, kind of describes what happens when you get into material life, you fall in love. You, know, you fall out of something else. Um, but Krishna is called Madan, and so he is Madan Mohan. Cupid bewilders everyone. Uh, by his amorous arrows of attraction. He makes the opposite sex look very attractive and irresistible. And But Krishna is Madan Mohan. He can attract that person who attracts everybody in the material world. So he's the ever fresh Cupid. <laughs> and because he is endowed with the mood of his internal Shakti, Srimati Radharani, she is called Madan Mohan Mohini. So she attracts, that person who attracts everyone is attracted by Radharani. And Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Krishna, and, the, and Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Radharani, who he's Krishna himself, becomes attracted to Krishna. So as Krishna is attracted to Krish to Radharani, Radharani is attracted to Krishna. But the stronger attraction is that Krishna is attracted to Radha. And both are attracted to each other. So that is the real amorous activities, which is the source of these reflections of amorous activities that we have in this world amongst the boys and girls. Mm -hmm. He bears newer and newer moods of emotional ecstasies. So not only does he, does he, when he dances, he exhibits emotional ecstasies, but we find that each time he dances, he's always expressing different and newer moods of ecstasies. He's profound of performing novel dances. In other words, he's very creative in his dance. So he may dance one way, he may dance another way, and he may dance in a way that no one has ever seen before. So this is his novel dance. Lord Chaitanya is very funny. When he was with his associates, he would be joking all the time. Prabhupada said he was constantly joking, and everyone was feeling such ecstasy uh, that would cause them to laugh and laugh and laugh at his jokes. <laughs> but generally he wouldn't joke outside of his intimate circle. So he never joked in with people in general or with anyone else except those in his intimate circle. His brilliant luster is like freshly cast gold. So he's Goranga. Suvarna, Varna, Suvarna Vanayar. I bow down to Goda, Gora, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So this song is done by Bhakti, uh, I'm sorry, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Second verse. <laughs> Nava he mayutam nava nityasu cham nava vesha kritam harinam aparam 
Navata Vila Sat Suda Prema Mayam Panamami Sachi Suta Gauravadam Panamami Sachi Suta Gauravadam Panamami Sachi Suta Gauravadam Translation <laughs> He is endowed with ever fresh love of Godhead. His radiant luster is like the color of fresh butter. He is arranged in ever new fashions. He relishes ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He shines in ninefold new ways while executing the ninefold processes of devotion. He is permeated, permeated with the most auspicious loving nature. I bow down to Goda the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. Hmm. Again, his color is mentioned, this time fresh butter. He, when he dresses, he dresses in new fashions, but nothing outside of his normal. In other words, he is always dressed in the, in the way he dresses, but he dresses it in different ways, just to express his desire for variety. He relishes ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He shines in ninefold new ways while executing the ninefold process of devotional service. And he is permeated with the most auspicious loving nature. So those who knew Lord Chaitanya would uh, attest to that. His nature was so sweet and so loving. And uh, at the same time, he could also be very strong. Said that Lord Chaitanya was soft as a rose, was hard as a thunderbolt. So he could be both. Here it describes his sweetness, his ever sweet, auspicious, loving nature. Verse three. Mm -hmm. Hari Bhakti Param Hari Nama Dharam Kalajapa Karam Hari Nama Param Nayane Satatam Prayaya Shrutaram Pranamami Sachi Sutta Gauravadam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravadam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravadam Number three He is absorbed in devotion to Her Hari He maintains the chanting of the names of Hari while chanting he counts the holy names on the fingers of his hands. He is addicted to the name of Hari. He always has tears of love welling in his eyes. I bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So here it talks a lot about his chanting and the importance of counting. Even Lord Chaitanya followed the principles of counting. Sankhya Purna. So even the Goswamis were chanting You see the Prabhupada in a few lectures, not often, he would always say, make sure you have your counter beats. So we have to follow our numerical vow and make sure we count. Some people think, well, I'll just chant as much as I want and whatever I chant, I chant. No need to count. No, this is not our tradition. We very carefully count the number of rounds we chant, the number of names we chant. And that way we uh, can increase by seeing how much we do each day. We can see how much we can increase like that. He is addicted to the name of Hari. Addicted. It's like people get addicted to do so many things. People get addicted to sugar. They get addicted to alcohol. 
will get addicted to various types of illegal substances. People even get addicted to prescription drugs. People get addicted to everything. People get addicted to sex life. There's, there's all kinds of addictions. People get addicted to eating. There's, you name it, and there's an addiction for it. <laughs> but addiction means you got to have it. You can't live without it. So that's this addiction to the name of Hari is nicely taught to us by Lord Chaitanya. And because of his addiction to chanting the names of Hari, his eyes are always filled with loving tears. Verse number four. Satatam janatam babu tapaharam kamamharta parayana loka vatim navalehakaram jagatapaharam panamami sachi sutta goravaram Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Number four He always we, he is always removing the suffering of material existence for mankind. He is the goal of persons who are addicted to their supreme interest. He inspires men to become honeybees eager for the honey of Krishna praying. He removes the burning fever of the material world that bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So material world means to suffer. The living entity has come here simply to suffer, although it thinks it can enjoy, but actually it's simply suffering. He removes that suffering simply by his presence, by his instructions, by his example of devotion. And it says here twice, he removes the burning fever of material existence. Sometimes people get addicted to different material activities and it becomes feverish as we heard from the previous verse and it burns there are people who are suffering because of their addictions to different things in this world but they can't give it up and that although they know they suffer they continue to do it the one who comes in contact with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which is distributed by his is a deputed representatives who go everywhere and everywhere. Bodo Sukher Kabul Gai, Bodo Sukher Kabul Gai, Surabi Kundeche, Namera Kureche, Koda Nitai, Koda Nitai, Lord Nityananda is one of his messengers and he is the supreme messenger. He is the corporate owner of all the stocks of chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And he's selling those stocks for a very cheap price, just your faith. If you have faith in the holy name and you chant with faith, then the burning fever of material existence is removed. The suffering that comes from that fever is gone. And people become eager to hear about Krishna to remember Krishna, to serve Krishna, to chant the glories of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya is most merciful. Nija <laughs> Bhakti Tikaram priya charutaram naranartha nagar rajakuram 
Kulakamini manasalasyakaram Pranamami sachi sutta Gauravaram Pranamami sachi sutta Gauravaram Pranamami sachi sutta Gauravaram He plays cartels as his throat emits sweet melodious sounds and the vibrant notes of the vena are softly played. He thus inspires the devotees to perform dramatic dancing that is infused with aspects of his own devotional service. I bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So here we come into Lord Chaitanya's prime activity, Kirtan. He plays the cartos as he dances and sings melodiously. And the notes of the Veena are playing so sweetly. He performs dramatic dancing. He inspires his devotees to perform dramatic dancing that is infused with his own aspects of devotional service. I bow down to Golda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. Some of the kirtans that we used to have in the old days in Krishna consciousness were exhibitions of the dramatic dancing that Lord Chaitanya used to inspire. Devotees would dance in the most amazing ways. Sometimes so amazing one could never even begin to describe it. Dancing, how do you how do you become inspired to dance? Sometimes some devotees feel, well, I just don't feel like dancing. There's a way to become inspired, and that is to dance. Prabhupada would say, just get up and dance, and after some time you'll be dancing. Um, when we get into kirtan, we should dance, not just chanting and sitting. And sitting is, yeah, that's okay, but dancing is actually our our method for worship. And Lord Chaitanya, he danced so much, and he inspired others to dance. So when you dance in front of Lord Chaitanya, you know he is and happy to see, even if you can't dance. <laughs> Still, no one will know whether you can dance or not dance if the kirtan is going on nicely. Everyone is doing their own transcendental expressions of happiness in the form of dance. I remember when, before I joined the Hare Krishna movement, I read one book by an anonymous author describing how one live, how one is meant to live life. And at the very end of the book, the last sentence says, the ultimate expression of happiness is dancing. So dance. And you'd be surprised what you can do when you practice your dancing in Kirtan. Okay. Is it number six or seven? Six, isn't it? Six, yeah. No, number seven, right? Seven, yeah. What does it say? Six or seven? Guru Maharaj, we skipped number five. Oh, we did? Go back. I mean, the translation. Number five, we skipped. But you read on the translation of six. Oh, yeah, we did skip number five. Okay, so let's chant number five and do number five. Okay, well, we did, we just chanted that. Okay, and I was, oh, I see what I did. I read the wrong one. Okay, so 
We'll chant it again. Nija Bhakti Karam Priyacharu Katataram Naranartanadhagara Rajakulam Ulakamini Manasa Lasya Karam Anamami Sachi Sutta Godavaram Anamami Sachi Sutta Godavaram Anamami Sachi Sutta Godavaram Okay, we'll read number five now. And then we'll go to number seven after this. He who motivates pure, pure devotion unto himself, who is most attractive to his beloved servitudes, by his dramatic dance, and he exhibits the characteristics of the king of paramours. He causes the minds of beautiful young village women to dance. I bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. He motivates pure devotional service unto himself. He's attractive to his beloved servitor. He is the king of all paramours. He causes the minds of the beautiful young village women to dance. So then there is also dancing within the mind. The mind becomes happy and expresses its joy through the activities of happiness that enter into the mind simply by seeing the beautiful form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none different than Cupid himself. As it says here, he is the king of all paramours. And it says the women could not resist just wanting to, first Lord Chaitanya was very strict and no women could approach him but they would see him from a distance and they would feel so attractive. He was like this golden pillar with eyes full of love, his body just exhibiting various ecstatic symptoms in love for Krishna. This is a beautiful dissertation of the Lord's qualities. Okay, number seven. Yuga Dharma Yutam Purna Nanda Sutam Darane Suhitam Baba Baba Chitam Tanudanya Tanudhyanya Chitam Nija Vasayutam Vanamami Sachi Sutta Panamami Sachi Sutta Goravaram Panamami Sachi Sutta Goravaram Number seven He is accompanied by the Sankirtan movement which is the religious practice in the age of Kali He is the son of Nanda Maharaj come again he is an extraordinarily brilliant ornament of the earth. His preaching mood is suitably adapted to the cycle of birth and death. His consciousness is fixed in meditation on his own form of Krishna. He is always accompanied by his transcendental abode. I bow down to Gola, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So Lord Chaitanya came to Krishna Varna Tusa Krishna. Sangopanga Saparshadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Saha. So he, wherever he is, he is chanting the holy names of the Lord and performing kirtan. And as it says here, this is the religion of the age. There is no other religion except chanting of the holy names of the Lord. He is the son of Nanda Maharaj Kamagan. He is Nanda Sutan Sutta. Nanda Sutta or Nanda Sunu or Nanda Tanayo. He is extremely brilliant ornament of the earth. 
The earth is brilliant with many ornaments, but he is the best of all ornaments. His preaching mood is adaptable, suitable to the cycle of birth and death. That means simply by hearing the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one can be free from samsara. And where is he? Where is his mind? It's fixed on the lotus feet of his own form as Krishna. As he is in the mood of Radharani's love for Krishna, he is absorbed in Krishna, chanting the holy name of Krishna. And wherever he goes, he brings the transcendental boat that accompanies him from the spiritual world. Number eight. <laughs> Alunam nayanam charanam vasanam vadade salitam swakal namadaram kurute sura sam jagata jivanam kanamami sachi suta gauravaram kanamami sachi suta gauravaram kanamami sachi suta gauravaram Okay, his eyes, the soles of his feet, and the clothing are reddish like the color that heralds the rising sun. As he utters his own name, his voice falters. He awakens the sweet flavor of life throughout the universe. They bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. His eyes are red, the soles of his feet are red. His clothing are reddish, and they all herald. In other words, they welcome the rising of the sun as the sun rises in a reddish color. He utters his own name. He, his voice falters. He awakens a sweet flavor of life throughout the universe. And these are more of the characteristics and exhibitions of loving moods of Lord Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the mood of his own devotee, exhibiting love for himself, is the most amazing, un indescribable, mysterious, and most attractive in all aspects of attractiveness, incarnation of the Supreme Lord himself. He is not an incarnation. He is the Lord himself. And he is the Lord in, in the complete sense of the self as he carries with him Srimati Radharani in the form of her mood wherever he goes. Um, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was really, when he after meeting Lord Chaitanya, his whole life completely changed. He was a, a ritualistic brahmana, somewhat of a mayavadi, personalist, who had such knowledge of Shastra, unbelievable knowledge. He would teach Shastra to everyone. After meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave it all up and started to serve Lord Chaitanya. And many, he wrote many prayers and glorifications of Lord Chaitanya. You can still go to Jagannath Puri and you can see the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, which is right near the Ganga. Not the Ganga, but there is a pond of water that is called Sweta Ganga. I think it's called Sweta Ganga, yeah. And it connects to the Jagannath temple and uh, that pond of water is like a big lake and devotees sit around the lake and we do bhajans and have prabhachan and you could visit the house of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya which is right in that area. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit. I would highly encourage the devotees to sing this song every day. It's a beautiful and very sweet 
melody that once you adopt it, you'll be singing it all day because it's so addicting. There's this spiritual addiction that comes by chanting the glories of the Lord, especially these particular sweet expressions of love coming from these beautiful prayers by the great personalities who have complete devotion and attraction for Lord Chaitanya. Okay, and we'll stop there. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. You transported us to Navadvip Dham, where Lord Chaitanya is simply singing and dancing and enchanting everyone with his beautiful form, his beautiful singing, his love for Krishna. Thank you very much for that. Dear devotees, please feel free to share your heartfelt realizations, your comments, your love for Lord Chaitanya, and any questions you may have. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, so thank you very much and we'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow is a special class glorifying Srila Bhakti Tirta Swami, which will be connected to another program, which is hosting that. So you check with Lavanya or Tushar, they can connect you with that program tomorrow at the same time. The glories of Srila Bhakti Tirta Swami Maharaj. Thank you very much. All glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hiro. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.